What is up everybody? Gary Simon here. So today I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you two different ways that will take your plain Jane cookie cutter looking vibe design layout looking type of layouts and really bring them to the next level. So like take for instance, this layout right here. This layout is something I personally designed and I did it quickly for this concept, right? Now, certainly a lot of companies would just upload this and call it a day. But with these two different methods, I'm gonna show you, you can really elevate this type of layout, this cookie cutter layout into something more like this. Something that you re it really looks like, hey, they took the time for each section to really make sure that it's unique and represents that specific business. So the very first thing I did to get my site out of prototype looking hell is to browse around. Inspiration, that is something that not only newbies and vibe coders, you know, with any design or tech experience do, it's also people like me who've been designing for decades. This is something I do at the start of every project or where I'm trying to refine a layout to really get it to next level. And we all know there are services out there that provide you with inspiration, but some are certainly better than others. Some of the legacy ones, yes, any designer uploads anything they want and it looks beautiful, but it's not workable in practice. Enter Mobbin.com. The thing about Mobbin is when you look at a design, you know that that is live. All right. They have curated like 1100 apps and like over half a million screens and like hundreds of thousands of flows. So take for instance, my hero section. Well, if you visit Mobbin, this is super fast, by the way, I love how easy it is to use the site. All I have to do is menu open. This is my, my, my app idea is like a technology site. So I click on technology over here for sections. I come down, ah, hero. There we go. We have a bunch of hero sections and just simply glancing at these can really spark and initiate ideas. So one of the things that I've personally noticed when I was trying to gather inspiration, looking at these different hero sections is that a lot of them utilize some type of, not necessarily a screenshot, but maybe an interactive mock-up of, of a part of their app. So like here's an, ex an instance right here. I, here's an instance, if I just scroll down a little bit further, right here, it shows kind of like their app right here. That's what gave me the idea to do this. Now, of course, mine is animated as well, and I used Rye for that, but that's what really spurred this idea that kind of made the most sense for me. And then the next section was this little feature blip. I know, very uninspired. So I went back to Mobbin, I go to sections, and I click on features, because that's really just a feature section. So one of the things that I noticed when it comes to the feature sections on some of these examples is they really try to make it unique in relation to some aspect of their business. They're not just putting cards with, with little titles and descriptions like I had. They actually have illustrations that are relevant and animations that are relevant to their business. Or say for instance, something like this, where each card has been specifically designed with their app in mind, and I'm not just relying on text. So what's also cool about Mobbin is you can click the full page and see exactly how this particular section fits in with the rest of the app so that it's cohesive. So that gave me the idea browsing around on the feature section on Mobbin is to come up with a way to illustrate my features in a way that's kind of unique to my app. So I have this chat container and this chat container has different features that are literally attached to it on the sides. And when you click on them, the actual chat container will respond with a mock response that I worked in. So you can learn more about each of these features. And what's core and what's central to my app is really the dialogue that you can have with the AI chatbot. So all this, these, these sections that I've come up with are kind of just a result of browsing around on sites like mobbin.com. Now they sponsored this video and I'm 100% a user. So definitely check out the top link in the description to really take advantage of this really awesome service. Now the second tip I'm going to give you has everything to do with motion and animation and interactivity. So if you take my prototype layout that I had initially, there, there's absolutely zero movement at all. And I think there's room for pretty much every project to have some form of movement, some more, some less, depending on the context. So animation and interaction is, you know, I could make a whole course that's probably like 50 hours on the topic alone. But 
when you train yourself and you take the time to spend learning some of the basic fundamentals, such as when should I use it versus when shouldn't I use it, you're really gonna help set yourself apart and your product apart as well, so that it doesn't look just like another vibe design cookie cutter type of layout. So that original design that I had, super boring, nothing happening there, but now take a look at this one and how I was able to really elevate it with the use of several different tools. So when it comes to animation, you certainly have options. So you have CSS based animations, which will be the most performant. It's basically the process of using CSS keyframes and transitions to create simple animations. And then another option that you have, which can really widen the possibilities of animation and effects is the canvas element. So there are tools such as Rive, which is really freaking awesome, uh, such as Spline 3D and their HANA product, which is a 2D animation uh, ability that lives in the canvas layer as well. When you use these tools, which I did as well on my project, I'll show you in a second, they can really create some awesome type of animations that could be really relevant to your project. So for instance, this little hero section right here that I showed you, this animation, this is not HTML, this lives inside of a canvas layer and I build it with Rive. And it would be really difficult to try to achieve this just through HTML, CSS animations alone. And then another area that I used it for was my uploader right here. Look how cool this is. I, Rive has a lot of abilities that you can, just can't replicate alone with CSS. So you also have scroll-based animations. For instance, kind of just when I scroll past this area of this feature section right here, these three cards, something subtle like this, because it's a linear approach. You upload, the AI analyzes it, and then you have insights and the ability to chat with the results. To try to kind of convey that in an abstract sense. As you scroll down, it kind of just works its way through each of those three things. Another thing that I did to try to really customize things here with uh, interactions and animations, animation specifically, is these four cards right here. So the first thing you'll notice if you scroll down, these little pill title containers right here kind of follow the browser until the end of the cards. And then inside of each card, I have you know these lists that have to do with biomarkers, medications, et cetera. And these lists are not only just animating up slowly, kind of like a vertical marquee, but they're also every five seconds highlighting a couple of different results randomly just to show that there are con connections that the AI can see very quickly that even a lot of doctors and physicians can't see or don't see or fail to see. Um, another thing where obviously the interactions are really, you know, kind of crazy is when I scroll down, we have each of these six cards coming into view, but we also have hover-based interactions right here. And if I click it, yes, there's a whole sequence where you click them and it provides you with more information. And there's this uh, animation that goes through as it's kind of loading. And so interactions and animations can really be a joy to implement. And here's the thing about this. A lot of people aren't gonna believe me, but all the animations that you see here in this entire landing page, I did by prompting cursor. And that's because I know how to speak the language of these various tools. So I'm using Frame or Motion for this because this is a Next.js app, and I'm also using Rive. And when you're able to communicate effectively with the AI and you understand the basics of these tools, then you can get by without having to manually hand code these things, which is a topic that I'll be covering very shortly with more in-depth tutorials. And so that is it. Those are my two tips that really will take, you know, your existing design and you're looking at it and you're just, man, this is just bland. It's, it doesn't seem next level. Inspiration by using sites and services like mobbin.com Please don't use the other old antiquated ones. Those are old school and we just should throw them away. Um, and also taking the time to learn interaction and animations. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.